Welcome everyone, climb on board and buckle up because I'm going to take you on a ride today. I want to ride in a convertible down PCH, which is what my guest is going to tell you about in addition to how he helps his clients make up the 10000 a month. And you're listening to The Tim Laskus Show, and I'm Tim Laskus, and this is episode 40. And hey, before we get into our guest, let me tell you, if you're thinking about jumping into a podcast of your own, I know a lot of you are excited because it is like the Wild West. You got entertainers, you got people from, from all sports, from television, from the news, you, you name it, they're jumping on because it is the Wild West. Everyone's claiming their stake in podcasting. If you're thinking you want to do it, but you just don't have time, well, I'm telling you, you have time. You can go over to my, my podcast. You can go over to my website. You can check out my podcast too. Go to my website. I've got a free podcast cheat sheet just for you. Seven proven steps of how you can create, monetize, and launch this sucker. Get it off the ground. So go over to timlaskus.com. Get your free podcast launch cheat sheet. And now on to today's guest is Brian Lofermento. Brian is an entrepreneur, a speaker, and author of Entrepreneur to Entrepreneur. He's got a successful podcast of the same name and he has built multiple six-figure businesses from blogging, and he gives incredible value today and tells you how you can do it. So if you want to go from zero to 10000 a month blogging and how to attract these advertisers, which he's been doing, he did it when he was 21 years old, start his first. So you're going to want to listen up. Enjoy. The Tim Laska Show, in search of entrepreneurial gold. Tim digs deep into the minds of his guests, entertaining, down to earth, and informative. Now, here's your host, Tim Laskus. Welcome, everyone, to today's episode with Brian Lofermento. Brian, I didn't even ask you how to pronounce your name. Did I pronounce your last name correctly? Dude, Tim, you nailed it. Everyone gets intimidated, but it's phonetic, so well done. You nailed it. All right. Well, thanks for being on the show. You know, we were just talking. You made the big move from Boston Pocket Car all the way out to L.A. And tell the listeners a little bit about that, why you did that and what kind of fun you're getting into out there. Heck yeah. So the first week of December, it snowed out in Boston. And I just said to myself, I do not have another winter in me. So I packed up my car. I didn't pack my car. I packed it up <laughs> with all my stuff. Drove west the first week of January. Made it out here January 15th. I live in LA now. It's amazing. Dude, I'm outside. I mean, the fact that I'm an entrepreneur means I get to pick my own hours. In the middle of the day, you'll find me playing tennis in Marina Del Rey, biking down to Venice Beach, enjoying the sun. So yeah, man. That LA is so much fun. I'm so glad that I made the move. Man, I'm so jealous. I used to live in California and I'm not there now. I'm back on the East Coast, which which I love. It's fine. But I do miss California. But hey, tell the listeners a little bit about what you were saying. Uh, you met this lady who's in adult entertainment. What, what was the deal about that? <laughs> Tim, I'll let you take that one away. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just messing with you. Brian only he goes to church and picks up his women he doesn't go <laughs> hey i was gonna he's, say he's, tim i'm about to hop on a plane on wednesday to go to dc and celebrate easter with the family so don't don't be putting shade on me like that <laughs> all right all right i'm just kidding everyone i'm just being my goofy <laughs> self it's late you know hey but anyway brian tell the listeners a little bit about yourself professionally and what are you currently working on yeah, for sure. Great question. So when I was 19, I had no clue what the heck I was doing. It was freshman year of college. I knew I wanted to do something more productive than playing video games every day. So I loved writing. I loved the internet and I loved soccer. So I decided to write about soccer on the internet and I started a soccer blog and I really didn't know what I was doing. You know, fast forward six months in, I made my first $200 and I felt like a baller. I was a freshman in college. I just made 200 bucks from some company in Seattle that paid me for advertising space. But fast forward to junior year of college, I did my first thousand dollar day. I had 20 writers working for me. I was constantly flying over to England to watch games and it really took off from there. When I graduated college in 2011, I had $80,000 in student loan debt. And so everybody told me, hey, Brian, 
You need to get a job. You need that safe, steady income. You need to pay those student loans off. You need those benefits. You need health care. So I fell into the corporate trap. I only lasted four months at my first job, 10 months at my second job before I quit and said, you know what? I'm going to be a full-time entrepreneur. And so that's exactly what I did. I started a search engine optimization agency in Boston, grew that to six figures really quickly alongside a business partner of mine. Two years into that journey, he decided that it wasn't his dream for totally understanding reasons. He definitely didn't come from an entrepreneurial background, didn't come from a search engine optimization background. And so I was really left to figure out what the heck I wanted. Like, what do I actually stand for? And that's when I realized that my real passion is spreading entrepreneurship and spreading the fact that anything is possible. I mean, I grew a soccer blog as a teenager to three and a half million readers from over 200 countries around the world. Like, that is one of the coolest things ever. And I wanted to share that experience with other people. So I started creating online programs and online courses, and I wrote a book called Wantrepreneur to Entrepreneur. I launched one of the top business podcasts in the world called Wantrepreneur to Entrepreneur. So all of this has been a snowball effect leading to what I do today, which is I help wantrepreneurs turn into entrepreneurs and build 10K a month businesses. Wow, you gave us a lot of information there, and I'm, I'm trying to digest it. Back up a little bit. When you started that soccer blog, now for people out there who aren't really kind of up to date on speed on on blogging, kind of explain what blogging is and then how do you make money at it or how did you at the time? Yeah, good question. So blogging is is really cool. It's basically, I don't know if people remember Live Journal from, you know, the early 2000 days, but it's where anyone can just create a website and there's so many services out there that will create the websites for you and you can write about anything. You can write about your day-to-day life. In my case, I wrote about English soccer. You could write about politics. You could write about the news. You could write about entertainment. Blogging is literally just your platform to voice whatever you want online. Like Medium is one, medium.com is a great example of a micro blogging platform where anyone can start posting their articles. And the way that you make money is through selling ad space. And typically how ad space works is that an advertiser will approach you or you'll approach an advertiser and you will say, hey, for every thousand times that I show your ad, pay me $3 or $4 or $5. So that's per thousand impressions. And an impression is just every time you show their ad. So you'll often hear bloggers say the word CPM, those three letters, CPM. It just stands for cost per thousand. M is the Roman numeral for thousand. So if an advertiser agrees to pay you $5 CPM, every 1,000 times you show their ad, you just made five bucks. So you can imagine me as a 21-year-old getting three and a half million readers. That stuff added up quick, and that's why I was able to grow the blog so quickly. Wow, that's great. Now, what about for people who are thinking, okay, Brian, that's great. Yeah, I kind of messed around with blogging, but it it looks like all I was doing was writing articles to myself because no one was reading them. You know, you talked about SEO, kind of um, starting an SEO business after that. Like, what did you do to kind of advertise your blog to get it out there so that you weren't the only one just reading it? Yeah, that's a great question, Tim. And I call that posting to nobody because entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs, they tend to do that a lot where they blog to nobody or they post on social media to nobody or they Instagram to nobody. Nobody's listening. And it's totally the case for all of us when we started out. I mean, the first three months of my blog is probably just my college roommates, my mom and the girl I was dating at the time reading it. And that's it. So what I realized I needed to do was leverage other people's audiences. And so I was hitting up other soccer blogs saying, hey, my name's Brian. I just started Premiership Talk. I would love to produce some incredible content for your website. And all I ask in return is a link back to my website. So I was creating this awesome content for other people. They were posting it and their readers, because it was so awesome, when they liked my stuff, they clicked through and they started following my work. So I'm a huge believer in a rising tide lifts all boats. And Tim, I'm probably going to drop a couple of quotes today because I love quotes. And I really believe that one. A rising tide lifts all boats. When you surround yourself with other people and you grow together, you'll all grow. So that was the approach that I utilized. That is incredible. I mean, that's that's gold right there. I, I love that. And, you know, right now you 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 have that this podcast, you know, entrepreneur to entrepreneur podcasting seems to be exploding right now. It's almost like the wild west. There's so much going on. And and I think that 
people's attention. You're getting shifted from traditional kind of television and radio to to podcasting. Can you talk about you know why podcasting is is becoming like just so powerful right now, and why did you get into it? Yeah, totally. Lots of good questions, all, all baked into one right there. The cool thing about podcasting is it's also like business where I hear so many people say similar things to what you just said. You know, there's so many podcasts out there. Is it saturated? That's one thing that people like to ask me, like, is this industry saturated? Can I actually start a business there? Is podcasting saturated? Can I start a podcast and stand out from the crowd? The reality is, and Tim, this is why podcasts are so successful, because nobody in the world has ever made a podcast like you, Tim, can make it. No one's ever run a podcast the way that only Tim can host a podcast. Similarly, no one has ever hosted a podcast the way that I can host a podcast. And so podcasting transcends just text on a page. I mean, you hear our energy, you hear our enthusiasm, you get to know us personally. I mean, Tim, I I know I do it on my podcast all the time. I talk about what's going on in my life and my podcast listeners reach out, they react, they send me emails, they add me on Facebook, they love engaging with me. And it's just a really cool communication vehicle where if people are walking the dogs or driving in their cars or going to bed at night, they can tune in and they can learn about anything they want to. And people are pushing the envelope with podcasts in different ways. Look at Serial. I mean, Serial is an incredible podcast that I listen to. I binge listened to Serial, which is crazy because it just keeps you on the edge of your seat. Serial is a basically documentary over audio only about a murder case in I think it was in DC or Virginia or somewhere on the East Coast that you just get enthralled with and podcasting allows people to tell stories and Tim I know how much you like stories and that's why this is such a cool avenue well let me let me first say I don't think anybody wants to replicate this little rinky dink podcast of mine but (laughs) (laughs) but you said cereal the first thing that came to mind was Captain Crunch made me hungry (laughs) but that, no, not not cereal that you eat, but cereal, the podcast. So check it out. I've seen that. I've listened to an episode or two. And yeah, it's very intriguing. And I, I look forward to listening to, to some more. But you, you've had your hands in so many things, Brian. You've been very successful. And what are a couple of tips that you would have for some uh, entrepreneur, entrepreneurs out there who are just ready to make the leap? Yeah, good question. The, the first thing that or the biggest tip that I would give them is really one word, which is focus. And that's the area that I see most entrepreneurs and beginner entrepreneurs screw up is they have a lack of focus and they turn their head every time the wind blows. Every time someone says, oh, you need to be on Snapchat. Oh, you need to be on Instagram. You need to be on Facebook. No, forget about all of that and focus in on one thing. And I'm going to tell your audience, Tim, what they should focus in on. They should focus on who they want to serve because Mm. every successful business It doesn't start with a business idea. It starts with the audience of who you want to serve. Now, you can serve anybody, and that's the power you have as an entrepreneur is you get to decide what you want to do. You want to serve people who just bought a Rottweiler and they want to figure out how to train it? Good, serve them. Now, sit down and figure out the problems that they face and how you can solve those problems. You want to serve soccer coaches who don't know how to get the most out of their players? Good, serve them. You want to serve people who are looking to get a divorce? Good. Serve those people. Figure out who the heck you want to serve, and then your business idea will present itself when you start looking at the problems they face and the solutions that you could deliver. If you're focusing on anything other than that, then your heart's not in the right place because every successful business starts with the people they serve, not with you or your business idea. Well, I think that opened up a lot of eyes out there, people who are listening, because for many of us who wanted to kind of go in business, it was, they're thinking about the money. It's like, okay, not focus on who I want to serve, but let me focus on how much money do I want to make? And so you're saying that's not the case at all. You shouldn't be focusing on money, that you should be focused on what's the population you're going to serve or that person and give back and then the money will come. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, exactly. Because when you figure out who the heck you want to serve, and Tim, I like how you said that one person, because that's, I mean, so many of us, we call it the customer avatar. You want to figure out that one person and sit down and say, what does this person need? And Tim, I'll share this with your listeners. I don't talk about this publicly very often. I teach this in my courses, but I teach a concept that I call the results in advanced timeline, where I sit down and I say, okay, what is the result that this person that I work with wants? 
And so once I have that, I put it all the way on the right side of a timeline. I draw a horizontal line. And then I draw a bunch of tick marks. And I plot out what is everything that stands between this person and that result. So let's say you wanted to serve, let's say new moms who are looking to lose 20 pounds while still raising their baby. And, you know, I don't know. I don't know why I put myself in this corner that I'm talking about a market that I know nothing about, but let's roll with it. (laughs) So if that's who you want to serve, you know the result on the right, which is they want to lose 20 pounds and get back into the shape they were in before they were pregnant. So now what's everything that stands between them and that result? Well, maybe they have to figure out what their schedule is going to be with their baby. Maybe they need to figure out what a good diet plan is to to wean themselves off of those cravings that they may or may not have had during pregnancy. They need to figure out what when they're going to get that sleep because sleep is integral to to losing weight. So you need to plot out everything that's standing between them and that result and that's going to tell you what you need to sell to them. You need to sell to them a solution where you address those problems to ultimately guide them to that result. And when you do that, you'll have an irresistible offer. And that's when the money starts coming, Tim, is when you can serve people and get them those results. I always say that money is a natural byproduct of value. If you're out there getting people what they want, they'll pay you for it. Love that strategy. So powerful. And it sounds like once people have that in front of them and they see it and you walk them through, then it, they don't like the light bulb goes on and they go aha and and it but it 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 takes you working with them to kind of shed light on where do you want to be and then show them the way so that that is great Brian love that yeah awesome I mean it's it's something that people need to use you need to sit down and put that work in rather than just you know shoving things on paper and trying to come up with a website for your business that doesn't even exist yet mm-hmm love that stuff and i just can't get enough because that that is actually what people need to do now when did you realize that you wanted to be an entrepreneur how far back does it where i mean were you in diapers would you know trying to sell your milk to other babies or like <laughs> when did this all begin and, and how did you finally take that step yeah i mean hindsight is twenty twenty. it's funny to look back on like when did that entrepreneurial hustle and drive when did that start when did that fire ignite And I can think of a lot of different ways where I guess I always had the entrepreneurial hustle in me. I mean, so I grew up playing super competitively in soccer. I was always into soccer. And so as a, you know, 12 year old, even I was constantly yelling at the refs being like, come on, you got to make a better call. And I just always was questioning the authority and questioning referees, questioning teachers, questioning different people. So that's where I guess I started questioning what people told me like, oh, hey, you have to get a nine to five for 40 years of your life. I started questioning those types of things. And then when I was 16 years old is really when I made my first entrepreneurial dollar. I remember because of soccer, I was constantly denting cars. I mean, I would miss the goal and the ball would smash into a car and leave a good soccer ball sized dent. And so obviously my parents were not thrilled with that. So one day I was watching TV and an infomercial came on for these little suction cup things that you put in the shower that hold your washcloth. And the guy on the infomercial said, these are so strong, they can hold a bowling ball. And that got me thinking, hey, if that can hold a bowling ball, I bet it could stick to a car and pop a dent out. So I picked up some of those suction cup things. I begged my parents to give me them. And they did. And it started working. I I was just pulling out these soccer ball sized dents. So I went to school and I told every soccer player I knew and every basketball player that I knew because the balls are similarly sized. I said, hey, you guys. 20 bucks, I'll pop dents out of cars that you, you guys screw up. Wow. So that's what I started doing. And dude, Tim, as you know, when you start making money on your own, it is a drug and you just want more. So that's really the roots of where it started. So you were addicted from the beginning and you never went to rehab. You just kept that addiction going. Heck yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I tried to, to fool myself and wean myself off when I worked in corporate America after graduation, but I did not last long before I had those withdrawals. <laughs> That's great. But what kind of messages growing up did you receive from your family or anyone in could be friends or or maybe parents about money in general? Because it sounds like, you know, you kind of already were thinking about making money. But did you ever have a talk about actually, you know, how to make it, how to save it, what to do with it? Take one dollar, make two. 
Yeah, dude, Tim, I, I love that question. And it brings me back to my childhood. My parents, who are the two most supportive and encouraging parents in the world, like I thank them every single day for everything that they've instilled in me. And I attribute like 99% of my success to my parents. And looking back on it, so my mom in particular, she came from Albania. So my mom's family fled Albania in the 1950s because it was under communist rule. So very much she had the immigrant mindset in her when they came to the United States with basically nothing. And so I remember when I was a kid, I used to gawk at all these like huge houses in the suburbs of Boston and all these sick cars. I mean, if I saw like a BMW Z4 or an Aston Martin or a Bentley, I would just say to my mom, like, oh, that car is so cool. Like, I want one. And Tim, she always said the exact same thing to me ever since I was little. And she still says it to this day when I FaceTime her and say, hey, look at this $45 million mansion in Bel Air. She has always said, Brian, that's just a normal person who achieved that. That's just a normal person who's driving that car or living in that house. And so that's always been instilled in me is those people aren't any different from you or I, Tim. They are literally just normal people who never believed that they had any limits. They never believed that anything was out of their reach. And it's that belief. And that's why I love that Henry Ford quote, whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. And it's that belief that's been instilled in me ever since I was a little kid. Wow. It sounds like your mom was such a a powerful figure in your life and, and, made a big impact and and I, and I love how she just kind of put it into perspective because we we tend to look at people who you know have jets and drive ferraris and and live in 45 million dollar mansions as kind of not even being human and and we don't really even ass- kind of see ourselves as being similar you know we we put them on a a pedestal of almost like a godlike figure and and in our minds we limit ourselves because we we have this rolling kind of dialogue that says, you know, I can never have that. I can never be that. So I'm just going to gawk at what they have and, and just kind of, you know, suffer silently, so to speak. But I love how your mom did that and just kind of put it into perspective. Heck yeah. They're just normal people. Best lesson ever. <laughs> yes. We're just lucky to have a mom like that. And, you know, since you've been doing all this stuff from your blogging and podcasting and, and working with people and writing books and, and just fantastic stuff, and I'm sure at some point you've burned out. I'm sure that at some point you were going, I just don't know if I can do this anymore. I'm stressed. I'm down and out. Can you share with the audience a moment like that that you had where mentally you you were just ready just to throw in the towel and how did you get yourself out of it? Dude, Tim, you are you're bringing me back to to 2013 with that question. So, in 2012, I, I left corporate America. It was a year after I graduated college. 2013, I had already grown a six-figure business after quitting my job alongside a business partner of mine. We grew our business to six figures in just 13 months and about almost two years into that journey. So the end of 2013, I woke up one day super jazzed up. Dude, I'm always super excited about everything. And I woke up really excited that day. But I felt like something different was happening between my business partner and I. And so sure enough, before I went to get lunch that day, I saw an email pop up on my phone. And it was from my business partner. And it just said, the subject line said, the future of our company. And my heart dropped and I was just like, you know, what what could he be writing in this email? Like, what does he mean the future of this company? And so as I read the email, I quickly realized where it was going. And he was basically saying, hey, and he owned 49% of the company. So he was just like, hey, I vote. We're dissolving the company. I'm done. I'm out. This isn't for me. I don't know if I want to be an entrepreneur just yet. And I'm going to go find a job somewhere. And dude, Tim, when I read that email, it felt like everything was crashing down on me. It felt like, you know, my baby, I I was working 80 hours a week on this thing to grow this business and make a big impact on the world. And it just felt like it was gone, taken away from me. And I will never forget that moment because I looked around and I realized that the walls weren't falling in on me. The ceiling wasn't falling in on me. And thank God it was a great fall day in New England because I heard the birds chirping outside And I realized, wow, like this is what failure feels like. And if this is what failure feels like, the life still goes on. The world is still turning. Everything is still happening. If this is as bad as it gets, then so be it. 
And so I took the rest of the day. Obviously, I didn't do any work. I mean, my mind was just not there. And by that night, I still didn't know what to make of it. And I remember I, I talked to my parents and I said, hey, I think I'm done. I think I'm just going to live the easy life and, and go get a job and, you know, take the GMATs, go back to grad school and see what happens. But the next morning I woke up and one of my clients had emailed me just thanking me for, you know, an awesome job that I did on their projects. And that was the moment where I was just like, no, never let yourself think about that again. You will be doing a disservice to the world if you don't use your gifts. And from that day forward, it's never even entered my mind. Hey, go forth and do this thing, because if that's as bad as failure gets, you've got this. Well, wow, that's an interesting story. And it, it it sounds like when you got over the initial shock, kind of the shock and all of what just happened, you looked at it from a different perspective. And, and it's almost someone that it was like shot at, you know, somebody's shooting you know, bullets at you. And then all of a sudden it stops. And then you, you're you like, okay, crap, what just happened? And you look around, you're like, okay, I think I'm, I'm still standing. I must be okay. And then here it is, you, you had this client call you and connect with you and, and share with you how you impacted them. And so it sounds like that between the, those two kind of issues, it lifted you out of it and then you continued on your journey. Yeah, totally. And it always comes back to the fact, and Tim, I've already said it, but I'm going to say it again because I really think it's a powerful point. You need to realize, and everybody who's listening to this needs to realize, like for me, I know that nobody can serve the world the way that I can. Because I'm the only me on this planet and I will be robbing you, Tim, your listeners, everybody who I cross paths with, I'll be robbing them of the experience of my insights and my experiences. And so I think it's so crucial as entrepreneurs that we always remember, like Tim, the same is true for you, man. No one can serve the world the way that you can. You're the only one who can do it your way. And so that's what really got me through that time. And I think we all need to put our hands in the air and say, hey, this is it. I'm the only me and I'm going to serve the world the way that I was meant to. Well, you know, many times we get so caught up into looking at others, comparing ourselves to others of, you know, what what someone else has, what we don't have. It, you know, someone who has a show that's been out for a while and, and they have three million listeners or viewers or whatever it might be. And we're like, oh, I can never do that. So, you know, it sounds like, you know, for you is you know, stop focusing on other people, focus on yourself and realize that you have a unique gift. And that's what you're saying, right? Heck yeah, spot on. And that's another one of my favorite quotes. Don't compare your chapter one to somebody else's chapter 20. Like I've spent some time with John Lee Dumas, who was the 2015 iTunes podcaster of the year. His podcast makes like $250,000 a month. It's just crazy what JLD has accomplished in such a short, short span of time. So him and I went to summer camp together a couple of years ago. We played soccer together and just talked about it. And that was his first million dollar year when I met him. And I know that nobody knew John Lee Dumas before he became the John Lee Dumas that we all know now. And he hosts Entrepreneur on Fire as his podcast. And that's the thing is it's easy to look at guys like John Lee Dumas, who's on episode like 1200 of his podcast and say, well, I'm never going to get there. You're right. Your chapter one is not going to be you there, but neither was his chapter one. So yeah, never compare your chapter one to somebody else's chapter 20. Mm -hmm. And what would you say has been the most kind of fulfilling moment looking back there? There may have been several, but what's one that stands out since you've been on this journey, on this path? What stands out as being one of the most fulfilling moments? That's a good question. One that I haven't given much thought of. The most fulfilling moment during my entrepreneurial journey. Man, Tim, there are so many. And it's so funny that the most fulfilling ones are the the small ones that happen in silence and I can specifically think back to May of 2013 when I hosted my first ever in-person search engine optimization workshop just outside of Boston and it was cool for me that night because my business partner and I we invited 20 local business owners to come and we said let's just talk about SEO with them for an hour and give them pure value and see what happens And two amazing things happened that night. And that's why it was just one of my most fulfilling moments as an entrepreneur. First is my parents got to come because it was in the suburbs of Boston. So they showed up and I'll never forget my mom afterwards. She was just like, oh my gosh, it was so cool seeing you speak to these 20 entrepreneurs and fire them up about their businesses and see how well your message resonated with them. So I could just feel the pride from my parents that night. But two, 
One of the entrepreneurs in attendance, at the end of my presentation, I asked the room, does anybody have any questions? And this guy who's a painter outside of Boston, he raised his hand. And Tim, you have to remember, I didn't sell anything that night. I was just giving people value. But this guy raised his hand and he said, who do I cut the check to? And that was such a powerful moment for me because that was the night that I realized, wow, by just giving people value, by being a good person who actually cares about the people that he serves, that's how you'll make it. And so that was such a fulfilling night for me, and that's why I take every opportunity. Tim, when guys like you reach out to me, when radio hosts reach out to me, when colleges reach out to me to speak to their students, I always say yes, because if you can impact people, there's no better fulfillment in life. Well, that's just an excellent example of of really kind of what we've been saying, what we said earlier about get the focus off the money, focus on giving back and serving others and the money will come and and it doesn't get any better than that of, of how that worked for you you weren't even looking for money and a guy was willing to cut you a check that's awesome brian you, you're just a wealth of information it has been a ton of fun we're running out of time but before we go can you tell the listeners where they can find you online how they can buy your book and where they can listen to your podcast Heck yeah, for sure. So the podcast is called Wantrepreneur to Entrepreneur. It's in iTunes, Stitcher Radio, all the usual places. They can tune into the podcast at thewantrepreneurshow.com. So that's thewantrepreneurshow.com. But even cooler for your listeners, now that they've met me here on your podcast, they can go to imetbrian.com. They can get a free paperback copy of my book. All they have to do is pay shipping and handling. I'll write a personal note for them, especially since they're listeners of your podcast. I'll ship it out to them. They can get a copy of Wantrepreneur to Entrepreneur. So they can just go to imetbrian.com. That is fantastic. And also, for the first 100 people who who leave, go to his website and leave your name, he's going to give you a ride in his convertible down the PCH Highway out in California. (laughs) Heck yeah, I like that deal, Tim. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Hey, thank you, Brian. You've been a fantastic guest. I hope everyone will check him out on imetbrian.com. Brian, you have a great day and enjoy California, buddy. Thanks so much, Tim. Thank you. Want more entrepreneurial tips? Go to timnaskus.com.